Shauna Turner with Direct Colors, and we're about ready to get started with our first demo at the Oklahoma City Home Garden Show. Some of you may have come out and visited with us in the past, and we've got a whole new look. Um, so let me show you the booth and tell you a little bit about what we're doing here. This year, uh, we've got a whole new look, as I said. We've got our samples out. Um, of all the different products that we sell, both for interior floors, exterior floors, and for countertops. This year, we have brand new banners provided to us by a local artist by the name of Sam Garland. If you'd be interested in seeing some of his additional work, you can find him online too at samgarlandillustrations.com. So I'm going to move over and we'll get started with our demonstration and you'll see what Ken has to tell us about kitchen countertop remodeling. Now he's already prepared this for mica countertop using a sander. The surface does need to be roughed in order for the overlay he's about to mix and apply uh, to actually adhere. Yeah, just water and uh, you can mix it up to peanut butter consistency. Uh, but the thing is it's so high in polymer content that it does start kind of setting up in about 10 minutes and you can tell when you're working on it, it starts kind of falling up and uh, you need to add more water. You can extend the line by doing that. And um, if you're working outdoors with this stuff in the summer or it's just hot, you can add ice water to slow down the chemical reaction. Are these concrete countertops? Is that what you're showing us? I think it's like this under. So Ken's mixing his overlay right now, and the objective with this demonstration is to show folks in the audience and everyone at home how you can remodel an existing kitchen countertop without having to pull it out and replace it entirely. Um, so this is a material that, that costs very little for you to give your kitchen a whole new look. everything from white to blue to green. Uh, you just want a solid integral color, and then I've used uh, like beige bases and white bases and gray bases, and then use the uh, acid stains on top, or use metallic epoxies on top, and uh, I've airbrushed the pigments, uh, like like uh, in that uh, black bottle there, is uh, what would normally be a soft gray pigment, it's basically a uh, flat um, and I put a couple pinches and shake it up in water and I can curl it into my wet upper leg and later uh, I'll be showing how to use that when you're doing the texture and you can use it for an antique. And, uh, Let's get a close up of that mixing. Really you want to be thorough when you're mixing your overlay? Three to five minutes mixing is necessary to see that it's properly combined before you attempt to apply it. That's a little more water than that. Now, just as a point of interest, our most popular colors of concrete pigment for countertops, both indoors and out, is first I like blue, small paint then black, and then gray. Because you the bottom of the bucket and the sides, kind of like baking a cake, you know, if you don't stir it long enough to get crumbies in there. Not something you want when you curl and this down. That's that's about the consistency. Now, please note no, how the overlay is coming off of the drill bit, or the paddle rather. Out. You want to make sure that you have the consistency of about a thin pancake batter. And he's about to put it down on the surface. Pour you a little bit out there. Nice shape. Let's see how far okay. that gets. Because this really doesn't have to go on very thin. Uh, a lot of times, total application on the countertop is about 16th of an inch. You can go up to the quarter inch with this if you're stamping. 
Ken's applying this with a magic trap, which is really an outstanding tool to pull a nice, smooth finish on the countertop application. Once this was sanded with 40 grit, uh, main thing at first is just trying to get you a scratch coat on there. Um, it's something to help your, your next coat stick and even better, smoother. And um, it does not trail that great uh, uphill because it is uh, the nature of the product. So normally I, t I take it to vertical uh, surfaces. i just kind of bring that around these edges like this and get a good scratch coat on that. Now that's some pretty good trial work, folks. I feel like I should applaud. Huh? <laughs> That's some good work, Ken. <laughs> now you notice this, this trial will leave bag marks and stuff. When you come in with a, with a second coat, when it's dry, and you put a hard trial on that, you'll get a lot better coat. Um, your second coat. What I'll do is put a little extra hair. Come around and coat these front edges. And I really just want to get get them turn white here. I'm put a little edge on here. As he is coating that edge, please take note of the mess that's being made. So if you're doing this in your kitchen, your drop cloth is your friend. Don't overlook preparation before you get started. Uh, the concrete, uh, for about two or three days, you can still scrub it off with this uh, a wall uh, after that, uh, you have to sand it off. Uh, you get a proxy on your child's floor. Uh, if you get it up before it dries, acetone or a bet on the rag and wipe it right up. If you get any big logs, you can hit them with a heat gun and then just scrape off the equipment. <laughs> Now, if anyone listening is having trouble so, hearing some of what Ken's saying, this really video will be good, produced and available at directcolors.com and on YouTube in the next week or so after the show is over. I don't really have a long time for a second color in this demonstration, but see if So Ken has sprayed water onto the surface of the overlay just to moisten it up a little bit as he works it with his trowel. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it sets up pretty fast. You, you'll, you'll know. Dry to the touch? Dry to the touch. And you're good. Now, if you're going to stain it, let it sit over. I like to sit, let mine sit over mine. Um, and then when I... And then when I... Uh, no, because you're going to get it real wet and everything when you stain it and you want it to be completely dry and you're staining it for life. For those who are just joining us, welcome to our kitchen countertop remodeling demonstration one, featuring Ken Lazenby with Ken's Custom work. Design. It'll Ken's an expert in kitchen concrete. remodeling and he is demonstrating the application girl. of a concrete base. overlay um, to a previously uh, sanded and cleaned Piece of uh, formica. So this would be an opportunity uh, for homeowners with formica, yeah. existing formica countertops to remodel them inexpensively and get a dramatic new look in their home. Either themselves or Ken would be happy to come do it for you too. Now he's hitting that with a, a different trowel now, which he is, is going to get some finish and texture on his overlay application. Uh, 
Now, if you're using an epoxy, you don't have to worry about jaw lines getting this perfect. You can sand this with a 40 grit palm sander the next day. And uh, if you're putting your epoxy on there right, it's going to be too high all that stuff. And remember, viewers, we're here at the 2017 well, Oklahoma Home and Garden Show at the Oklahoma State Fairgrounds in the Bennett Come Event closer, Center. We're in booth 1614. We'll be here until Sunday at 6 p.m. and today until 9. So please come by if you see this and have some questions about what Ken's doing. He'll be in the booth uh, all day today. He does have another demonstration. He'll be doing it 5 p.m. today. So please stop by if you're planning to come out this way. Don't miss us. Uh, we're at in the Bennett Event Center booth 1614. And Tracy, I see you. This is exactly what we talked about you doing at your house. Uh, yeah, this is definitely something that uh, needs to dry this in to get a second coat. I'll show you how to take these edges. That out. Flat. You don't want any big bumps. Uh, That's trying to get a close up of some of that texture that's working there on the surface, smoothing out the coat. That's how you get the first coat on. And then uh, I've got white on there on the back, but I'm only picking this up. And this is an important technique that he's demonstrating here. <laughs> when you apply an overlay to a vertical surface, it needs to be a little thicker. It needs to be a little thicker than what you're putting on the face of the countertop. So keep that in mind. Make sure that you've got a little stiffer mix available um, to use on your edge work. Uh, don't be afraid to spill a little on the floor. As long as you've got a drop cloth down, you'll be okay. So this is a seamless texture roller. This is called Bluestone. I believe I got this one online somewhere at uh, like Butterfield Color for like $85, uh, which is for as much as I've done with it, it's, uh, it's pretty cheap. Red Color sells a mold release agent for any stamping you want to do. It also helps help keep your trowels from sticking and that sort of thing. So what you want to do is spray the tool down. Very good with release agent. Also spray the area that you want to texture. And then Roll this slowly across that. Might put a little too much on. That's okay because uh, you can go back and flatten these areas like with a drywall knife or your trowel. Flatten them more, and then when they dry, any sharp edges that you have, uh, you just knock them down with a piece of sandpaper so you don't have anything. And again, to he's reapplying. Like he's reapplying the uh, the liquid release, which makes sure that the roller doesn't take up all the concrete once you go over it. Um, it's a very important step. Um, you can use it on your trowel and all the tools that you'll use to uh, finish the countertop. Okay. 
Okay, so he's coming back now with his trowel for the texture and to pick up those loose drips of overlay. Sometimes just pat that and bring that out and drag it in and I think that that gives you kind of a nice edge too. Now, just to let you know uh, what our next step is, once he demonstrates the application of the overlay, uh, we're going to pull up a pre-prepared countertop surface uh, that the overlay is already dry, and then we'll begin with the application of a metallic epoxy. Um, so this is something that Ken has been recently working with and has really mastered this technique. So if you're interested in finishing your countertops using a metallic epoxy, which is going to be essentially a very glossy, sort of deep sealer with metallic uh, pigments in it, it's really it's really an art in the application. But he's going to show you a little bit more on that in a few minutes. Uh, or you can make this really dry and put it in a crack and let it uh, get almost dry and scrape it off. And then you can do an overlay on the entire floor. And that crack will come out. Well, I mean, cracks will always come out. Yeah, I'm talking more to But uh, I've never had any, anything show through it. Uh, I've, I've done uh, over uh, four inch, 12 inch tile. Normally what I'll do is get a good coat on the tile and sand it and seal it. And then I'll put another layer or two. And that way when I'm acid staining, it does not soak down in those in those tile lines and come back when you seal it, you know, where you see every square because it will it will penetrate and get darker. So if you seal the concrete and lay and lay more layers, uh, doing over tiles or over cracks or something like that, uh, you won't see that through, through acid stones. When an outside application exposed to the weather, how well does you got to use the right sealer for the right application. It's all about the sealer. Um, and these guys can tell you a lot more about uh, sealers. They have everything you need. Um, they're, uh, I would recommend the solvent based sealers like the AC1315 high gloss where they have a satin for outdoors, but um, if you're dealing with, say, uh, you've already got stamped concrete and it's started to fade because the sealer hasn't been coming up, they've got a great liquid antique. Um, the and, product he's uh, mentioning right now that. is featured uh, on the banner um, in sealers. the back of our booth that says exterior, uh, directcolors.com. That so, is our liquid colored antique. I use water and next to that, um, lot, where the young lady uh, is standing, are samples of that very product. Come uh, on by, check it out yourself. We'll be here until and Sunday. They're a five year uh, no wax finish. Uh, they also have that in the solvent base. Uh, they have lithium penetrating sealers, which are great in areas like uh, restaurants, perhaps, where you may get a lot of where they're standing in water all the time or, or basements. Um, but, uh, and then that's a water based satin gloss, which I'm going to show in the next demonstration um, how to uh, do that. And uh, so, what I'm going to do now is uh, put this countertop here somewhere and uh, break out the finished piece and uh, show you guys how some uh, metallic deposit goes on. I'm going to take this moment to show you one of the most popular images on our website today. And here it is. This is one of our banners, as I mentioned earlier, that my colleague Sam Garland created for us. But you can see, um, this is a very unique finish, and it's been done with a blue acid stain. 
But the story of this picture is quite interesting uh, because they finished, the homeowners finished their floors, asked to stain them like you normally would, and yet they had when they applied the acid stain, they applied it to concrete that wasn't fully cured and moisture was still coming up through the concrete. So what it created was those fascinating black areas because this stain is in fact a copper-based stain. And so it begins to patina in the presence of water. So this floor, though the water of course has completely evaporated now, um, created this one-of-a-kind look with this acid stain that really people just love. And that's something that's quite unusual and probably difficult to replicate. Um, but nonetheless, it's still one of the most popular things that we have on our website today. And so if you have questions about how this was done or would like to see more pictures, uh, there is a project on our website, directcolors.com, that has details about how they did it with numerous images um, throughout their process, actually. Now let's see where we are with our, with our demo. Now this banner, again created by Sam Garland at Sam Garland Illustrations, is one of my favorite contractors. This fellow is indeed one of the most talented countertop, uh, countertop specialists that we do business with. And his name is Jody Gott uh, with Gott Landscaping and Supply. Now he's based in New Iberia, Los, uh, Louisiana, the New Orleans area. Uh, but he does do, you can find him on Facebook, and he does countertops all over the region. Um, so this is something that you really like. This is an outdoor kitchen. And in the outside of the image, you'll see um, a, uh, a bar and a grill, and he does some of the most beautiful outdoor kitchens. So check him out. That's Jody Gott, Gott's Landscaping, That's New I Iberia, Louisiana. So here's our piece. Um, now my stone texture there. I don't want to be too rough, so I'll just want to do this time. We're doing a little sandpapering, fixing any rough Not edges on our piece. Just basically knock the edges off of that and back here. Got the trial line sticking up there. Important to brush this off, folks. Once you've done some sanding, you need to brush off all that loose debris. It becomes an impediment to successfully sealing the surface if you don't have it clean before you get started. If you've got an area, you know, especially windows open, stuff like that, other people working in the house, and you get dust in the air, it will get in your boxes. So uh, the more dust you can avoid. You can't always sand it if you do happen to get a little flaws in your epoxy. You can sand it with 40 grit and lay another coat. And they recommend using uh, like the 550 water-based polyurethane for, for a top coat for this because it's very scratch resistant. Uh, and it's a uh, very durable, very durable polyurethane. These here are the one quart epoxy kits. You know, Part A, Part B, and now uh, what we're going to do is uh, open all these up. And these are pigment pads, and I'll show you these two guys. This is a whale. That is a makeup dried fine powder. You can take it so fine. What we've got here um, is a metallic pigment color pack. You can find those available on our website on the Countertop Supplies page. Um, but those are just individual metallics that are used in the epoxy. He's actually going to mix that in in just a moment. But it just gives a gives the finish a shimmering quality. And um, when you put an epoxy on, we we'll use a 10 mil match squeegee to make sure that you get the right amount of epoxy. On your countertop, and then you back roll, and then it'll kind of self level, and then we'll use the uh, force of mass to them, and that helps as well.
this is also the technique that you see um, all those nice metallic floors. Um, this is this is what they're using. And then they're top coating with uh, a polyurethane or urethane of some type. Okay, so Ken is adding the metallic into the resin before he actually combines the activator, which is in the smaller can. Now, these pigments don't like to blow up, up hill that well. Uh, they make this little bit uh, flat. But uh, you will get some of that color. You always pour some over this stuff. It's very sticky. Sticky stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so he's going to give that a good mix to combine. I'm going to make sure that the uh, metallics so are I'm mixed throughout the resin um, so that it comes out looking as you'd like it to and not with streaks. The only thing they like about it the best is um, they don't have to destroy their, their kitchen to get a new countertop. And some people just want to do new construction uh, because uh, you can personalize it so much. Uh, there's, only, there's only so many pieces of granite out there. Um, they sell nickel gel acid stain, so if you want stencils, the florals, or your name, uh, whatever you want, you, know, you, you can do it. And so, the idea is get these, these pigments in there looking really, really swirly looking. So you want to stir this for about three minutes on each color. And then when you okay, your, he's getting started on the your, second uh, color. Hardener. We're going to look at that too. About three minutes. Now, once you have a hardened wood, you have a five minute hardener. So you're going to have to get it out on there in five minutes. Uh, then after that, you've got about 15, 20, 20 minute working time. So if you're working a large area, I suggest having help. Or, or you know, do, if you've got a small section, you have to do do one at a time uh, so that uh, you don't have a box that can off done. This, this stuff can reach 150 degrees when it can. How much does it work now? Uh, it, they say about 50 square feet. Um, for me, I put it on really heavy. If you're, if you're probably just rolling it on a real smooth surface uh, or a floor or something, you probably would. Uh, for me, it covers about 25 square feet. Now they they also sell a kit that's got the hardener, stick, the, the squeegee roller, and a tinted sealer that you can put down for a background color. That's uh, our three-step metallic epoxy and tinted sealer com. kit. It's also available on the uh, countertop well, supplies page if you want um, to take a look at it. Also. Like uh, uh, there's a photo up there somewhere, uh, one that's black with white, and um, I use acid stain, uh, black acid stain on the concrete. And of course, here we're using white pigment on the concrete. But you can use tans, silvers, and, and uh, so I've got that mixed up. Oh, that looks uh, great! Wow. That looks, uh, All right. Cool. So, now, so good uh, contrasting uh, colors uh, that he's selected here white. to go on this white base countertop. And you want to make sure to try to get everything out of both cans. Uh, so he's preparing the, now to add the uh, to the activator one. to the resin. Now, as he mentioned a moment ago, please keep in mind that once you add that activator, the clock is ticking for you. So please make sure you have all of your tools in hand, to hand when you're ready to begin um, so that you're not wasting any time trying to find a roller or a squeegee when you, get, when you add this activator and you're ready to begin. 
get this rolled on and they're where I want it. And then I'll show you how to put uh, the weld accents in. I said we're going to try to emulate marble. Okay, so he's going to give us a marble design today. It's one of the techniques that he's really mastered. I think you'll be quite impressed with the skill. But it's a marble technique. It starts looking even better when you start having the harder you can see now. It, it, does, it doesn't look the same yeah, all over. All right. <laughs> the thing is, you want to make sure you got it makes it really good, or or you'll do a countertop and have a you know, follow the recommendations, or, or you'll get a soft spot that just went out through. You know, have to dig it out. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think he's about ready to get started. So you kind of want to start like that. Just pouring a ribbon on. Now, if you are doing a much larger countertop, you would not want to go over the entire surface with your product, but take it step by step. You want to be able to get across a couple of times um, with your tools. Um, before the material sets up. So what is he doing right now? He's using a notched squeegee for the singular purpose of, well, moving it around the countertop, yes, but he's also gauging the depth of the coating. When you're working with an epoxy, it's got to go down at a certain depth, but don't be alarmed. All of those lines will disappear in just a moment when he comes back to roll the surface um, and if it's not, uh, finish the coating. If it's not running off the floor, then uh, he didn't put enough on. <laughs> so that's pretty even right there. Yeah. And it doesn't look like much at this point. This is the cool part. I want it. Now here he's rolling this out. I'm going to roll this both ways. And I'll tell you, this is a really hard stuff. I mean, uh, I don't know how many of you know anything about epoxies, but uh, they're basically like the resins that they use to build fiberglass boats, you know, that sort of thing. So what I do is take this and roll this up here. So I'm gonna dip a little Just more. Add in a little there. bit more whenever you need it. Keep a uniform amount of material on and your roller at all times. You know, and even I can put this thicker and it's it'll still soak well. Yeah. There's a little trash. Cool thing about that is you can start to see them kind of move around there, and you can kind of move these around in different directions and stuff like this now. Once you kind of got it level, you coming around in the front end. Okay, so now I've got that. That's separate a little bit. Oh, that does look nice. Hmm. Get my well. Oh. Hope you all at home can see the beauty of this finish. Now he's going to continue to work. You can also do cool with stuff he's about to apply that second color. You can see the more divots like a you know, like Remember, this is a marble look. So he's looking for some variation in texture so that he can come back with the darker color and begin to lay that in.
Now, as this goes off, a lot of times in your concrete, it's just like a sponge. It has holes in it. This creates heat, causes that air to rise. Um, so you start seeing little air bubbles and stuff start to form. A lot of times you use a heat gun to go over that. Um, I've gotten to where I like to start to mist it with acetone. It's cold, it gets on the surface, and pops those bubbles. Now that's a good tip, um, folks. Listen in on that. And also, um, the acetone reacts with the epoxy and gives you a little bit longer working time and allows it to flow a little bit. So if you have a mishap, you get a fly in just to dig it out. Um, squirt a little shot of acetone and it'll level back. Uh, by morning, this will be uh, rock hard. Uh, totally cured and uh, sleep for four hours. You can't stop. Yeah, you can't stop and start like the next day. Whatever you start, whatever you've got to go all the way to the end. But just switch in a bigger area, you know, you just do this in the calendar. Yeah, tape them off. And you can even do this application concrete and everything in the second place. It's actually thin enough that you can take blue painter's tape and tape off the sand. Now, overlays are not just for countertops, although they're increasingly one of our most popular projects, but you can use them on floors, too. You can see a lot of evidence on that on our website um, of overlaid uh, floors and patios. I put it on the plywood. I've got a concrete stained floor. Now, I have, uh, I have well mixed up, and what I want to do is come through here. Oh, my. Like this, like that. Now, this is where the artistic design elements come in. And I kind of want to kind of make one go around. I try to stay at a 45 degree angle, kind of like uh, 45 looks better than being straight across or side to side, but you kind of want to stick with the direction if you're trying to emulate something in nature because they're formed by water and water flows in one direction basically. It may veer off a little bit, but uh, it has a more natural look in the end if you stick to uh, you know, kind of a, basically a 45 degree angle or 32 or whatever. Take another roller now, and I want to swirl these around and work those in. Mm, I bet you all were wondering how he swirl was going to make that work. Swirl that around. All right. And you're thinking, man, that is ugly. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, Ken. Now you see that starting to swirl because it settles. Yeah, he's going to leave it like that. Work that in there. And then if I see that there's more that I want to add, I can do it quickly before this sets up. Trying to roll a little bit of that in there. Add a little bit of that. Gray color falling to it. So it's just drag it, swirl it. You can roll it in, 
downhill more heavily like that or a wider pattern. I think I want to add a little more in there. So again, those of you who just joined us, he's working in two different epoxy finishes with metallics in each one. One was a pearl, and he is now working in the darker color, which is whale. These are all epoxies. He's creating, as you may have already guessed, a marble technique on this countertop finish. You could. You'd, you'd probably want to prime it with a primer color and, 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 then, uh, and then do it. Epoxies, once they harden, so, um, have have do have to be sanded before you can apply additional sealer of any kind. Down. What are you spraying, Ken? Acetone. Okay. And that'll kind of pull up, but then it'll, it, it should start to kind of level that out, and it helps those pigments flow around a little more and get these these little marks in them like that. Please oh, yeah. note the it distinct webbing uh, uh, effect uh, that the acetone the brings to the top. It gives it kind of an antique uh, look, if you want, an older top, look, perhaps. You can barely see the white veins. It's, it just looks, and uh, it's it's somewhere on that uh, <laughs> on that screen over there. Okay. And again, just to be clear, he applied a, just a brief spray of acetone to this uh, surface to create that, like that look. I can take this and, and roll over it and smooth them out more. I can kind of do it or I can decide to leave it like that. Look, but, but see, some of them are already dissipating. Some of them are kind of big and they're going to go do that and let it settle, but it's kind of getting to that point where it's almost at a working time where you don't want to touch it. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah, you do want to be very attentive, um, even perhaps set a timer when you're working on a project like this um, to the maximum working time so that you don't hit it with a roller too late in the process. And doing so will mar the finish and streak the epoxy. So please be mindful of the working time. Pot life on these products is less, certainly less than an hour. Working time is about 15, 20 minutes. A little bit. They, they will not do it well. They will not preserve the base. Uh -huh. Yeah, or you could just leave the lines there and let the film flat down. And it looks like a zebra game. Direct Colors, we welcome no. back Ken uh, to complete a podcast on how to do this technique step by step using um, the epoxy metallic finishes and how to apply the acetone to create looks of this kind. So be looking forward to that. That's at listen.directcolors.com. I recommend putting it for a 550 polyurethane on top of this for transition. But it is, it is pretty scratch resistant already, uh, especially the lighter colors. Well, again, thank you for joining us for this demonstration of how to remodel a kitchen countertop. 
using a concrete overlay uh, and a metallic epoxy finish. Um, this demonstration was conducted by our contractor and friend, Ken Lazenby, uh, with Ken's Custom Designs. You can find him on Facebook as well as on our website. Um, he is available uh, for countertop remodels, for flooring overlays, for acid stains, pretty much for anything. Um, he's a real expert and has worked with our products for several years. So again, my name is Shauna Turner. I'm the general manager at Direct Colors. We're located in Shawnee, Oklahoma, and you'll find us online at directcolors.com. Or if you have a project that you'd like to talk with us, feel free to call us at 877-255-2656. We're available Monday through Friday and have many technicians on duty to assist you with whatever you may have planned for this spring. But this weekend, we're here at the Oklahoma City Home and Garden Show, and we will be here um, until 9 o'clock this evening. And tomorrow, which is Sunday, we'll be here uh, at our booth, 1614 and the Bennett Event Center, until 6 p.m. on Sunday when the show closes. If you've got a burning question, you want to talk to us, now's the time. Come on out to the Home and Garden Show at the fairgrounds, and we'll be happy to talk it over and make some product and project recommendations. Thank you very much for joining us and look forward to seeing the final video um, on our website and on YouTube in the coming weeks. Thank you.